Welcome to CERT Questions Bank. This video provides the latest NACE CIP 1001 exam questions for you to prepare for the test. An inspector's personal logbook should contain A. Subjective comments reading the application team B. Objective comments regarding the application work C. No comments regarding the application team. D. The inspector's personal opinions of the application team. The answer is B. An inspector's personal logbook is meant to document objective observations regarding the application work. This means the log should include facts about the work process conditions, materials used, and the quality of the application. It is not a place for subjective opinions or personal judgments about the application team. The focus should remain on the work itself rather than the people performing it. You have just received your NACE CIP Level 1 certification when you are asked to supervise a team of uncertified field pipeline inspectors. Your first preferred course of action is to A. Accept the assignment without hesitation. B. Advise the prospective employer that you cannot accept the position. C. Meet with the prospective employer to determine the scope of your role. D. Review the NACE attestation prior to making a decision. The answer is C. As a newly certified NACE CIP Level 1 inspector, your first step should be to clarify the details of the assignment and ensure that the role you are being asked to take on aligns with your qualifications and experience. NACE Level 1 certification is intended to allow you to perform inspections under supervision or in a limited capacity. So it's important to discuss and understand your responsibilities and scope before accepting the role. This helps you avoid taking on a position that might require more advanced certification or experience than you currently have. Good records can provide maintenance departments with detailed information about all of the following except A. What items were coded? B. What materials were used? C. When the coating will be reapplied. D. How the item was coated. The answer is C. Good records related to coatings typically provide detailed information about the items coated, the materials used, and the method of application, e.g., spraying, brushing. However, the timing of when a coating will be reapplied isn't typically part of the initial documentation unless there is a specific maintenance schedule or system in place for reapplication. The main purpose of good coating records is to document the initial coating process and materials for future reference, rather than setting exact dates for reapplication, which depends on factors like wear, exposure, and maintenance intervals. Non-conformance reports are completed by the inspector. A. In every instance that an item does not meet the specification requirements. B. When the inspector deems it to be a significant non-conforming item. C. When the inspector and contractor deem it to be a significant non-conforming item. D. In accordance with the specification's definition of a non-conformance. The answer is D. Non-conformance reports, NCRs, are typically completed based on the specification's definition of what constitutes a non-conformance. This ensures that the reporting process is standardized and aligned with the contract or specification requirements. 
The inspector is not responsible for reporting every minor issue but must report only those items that truly deviate from the established specifications or standards. It's important to follow the criteria outlined in the specification for consistency and proper documentation. The initial steel condition is important to the NACE inspector because a. If the steel is pitted more coating will be required. b. Less abrasive is need if the mill scale is gone. c. It affects the final appearance after blasting. d. The inspector may have to reject the steel. The answer is d. The initial condition of the steel is critical because it determines whether the steel is suitable for coating. If the steel has defects like heavy rust, pitting, or mill scale that cannot be properly cleaned or prepared, the inspector may have to reject the steel for coating. Proper surface preparation is essential to ensure that the coating adheres well and performs as expected. The inspector's role is to assess the steel's condition and ensure it meets the necessary surface quality standards before proceeding with coating. The form of corrosion that has the largest potential for unexpected catastrophic failure is a general corrosion, b atmospheric corrosion, c galvanic corrosion, d localized corrosion. The answer is D. Localized corrosion refers to concentrated, localized areas of corrosion that can cause sudden and catastrophic failure. This form of corrosion is particularly dangerous because it can cause a material to fail without significant warning, often at specific spots, like pitting or crevice corrosion, that weaken the material's integrity. It tends to be more difficult to detect compared to general corrosion, which affects a larger, more uniform area. Thus, localized corrosion has a higher potential for unexpected failure, especially in critical applications such as pipelines or pressure vessels. What is used to determine compressed air cleanliness? A. Needle pressure gauge. B. Psychrometer C. Blotter test D. Profilometer The answer is C. The blotter test is commonly used to determine the cleanliness of compressed air. This test involves collecting a small sample of the compressed air on a blotter paper and observing any oil, water, or particulate matter that may be present. It's a simple but effective way to evaluate the quality of the compressed air, especially when assessing its suitability for applications like coating, where cleanliness is critical to proper adhesion. Other instruments listed, e.g., pressure gauge, psychrometer, measure different aspects like pressure or humidity but do not directly assess air cleanliness. Osmotic blistering is most likely to occur as a result of a. Inadequate anchor pattern, surface profile b. Overcoating a surface contaminated with chemical salts c. Airless spray application d. Applying time coating too thin The answer is B. Osmotic blistering occurs when water and contaminants, such as chemical salts, trapped beneath a coating form blisters due to osmotic pressure. This is most commonly a result of overcoating a surface that has not been properly cleaned and is still contaminated with salts, moisture, or other residues. These contaminants can draw water into the coating leading to blistering.
Proper surface preparation is critical to prevent osmotic blistering and ensuring that the surface is free from contamination before coating is a key step. When performing tests for oil and grease using an ultraviolet light, the NACE inspector should be aware that a chloride salt may produce a false positive. B. Synthetic oil or grease may not be identified. C. Ultraviolet light may contaminate the surface. D. Presence of weld spatter may produce a false positive. The answer is B. When using ultraviolet, UV light to detect oil and grease. The UV light works by causing certain contaminants, like oils, to fluoresce. However, some synthetic oils or greases do not fluoresce under UV light, making them difficult to detect using this method. While UV light is effective for identifying petroleum based oils, it may not pick up synthetic types which could lead to undetected contamination. Therefore, it's important for the inspector to consider alternative methods for identifying synthetic oils or greases if necessary. To achieve consistently accurate results with all ALT test equipment. A. Wear gloves when sampling. B. Wash your hands before sampling. C. Avoid placing the sample discs on a surface. D. Calibrate the instrument in the field. The answer is D. To achieve consistently accurate results with all test equipment, calibrating the instrument in the field ensures that it is providing precise and reliable measurements in real time under the specific conditions of the work environment. Calibration is crucial for maintaining the accuracy of instruments like coating thickness gauges, profilometers, and other testing tools. While wearing gloves or washing hands, A and B, are good practices for cleanliness and avoiding contamination, C, is important, Calibration directly impacts the accuracy of test results and is essential to ensure that all measurements are valid.